<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, it's a very special stream in that uh, there should be an H in there. There we go. In that, we're just going to open up a bunch of packs and indulge my just fascination with, like, reselling magic cards to dollar stores. You can see these are a bunch of magic cards. You get 20 for a pack. We've got, as the video implies, five packs. That's 100 different cards. Um, and this is done by Pristine marketing uh uh it says here that the the enclosed are the, the enclosed genuine collectible trading cards have been legally purchased and repackaged for retail sale by pristine marketing incorporated i'm i'm fascinated by how this process must go down because because the cards i've gotten in the past they've all like they've they're not bent they're not they don't seem to have any wear and tear, at least visible to my eye. So how does a company go about acquiring these cards? And by the way, I assume stripping them of their their goodies. I mean, like I said, uh, I don't think we're going to find any black lotuses. I know enough about magic, but here's the thing. I don't know really that much about magic cards. I have one... I'm aware of it from high school. I have one deck that I found in a thrift shop. Pretty good. I mean, it's got a bunch of, like, uh, red goblin cards in it. And I, I... I like it. I mean, it's interesting. I consider it my deck because... I don't know. It's just cool. I, I found it. But I see these cards, and I think this is going to be good for me because I'm just interested enough in magic just enough to be excited about all this but not really care that these are probably shitty like generic cards from all sorts of different expansions because I've done this little dance before um, but like I said I'm 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 fascinated by uh, pristine marketing I know they also do the same thing with comic books like a lot of comic books from the 90s and 80s have uh, gone through a repackaging kind of situation um, I just want to know the logistics. I want to actually get in contact with Pristine Marketing to figure out what they do. Because as you'll see, these are from a lot of different expansions. Like, look at this badass. This is a uh, kite sail. I, that's a pirate word. Corusar. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that, but let's see. It's a human. He's a pirate. He's flying around in a frickin' kite. Uh, da, 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 da. Has flying as long as it's attacking. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what this means. But anyway, I'm also doing this as a stream because I could do this as just a, a, a canned video and say, Oh, wow, look at these cards. Oh, well, this is wacky. I don't know enough about magic, and I'm hoping you guys at home nor no more than I do about what's going on. For example, this is a Senjuin Glorifier, a vampire Celtic. I never even knew such a thing existed. Um, I'm also always been fascinated by the beautiful artwork that's been in Magic Cards. Um, three three. I'm guessing that's decent for three sun. Cards? I don't have a lot of land cards. At least I don't think so in my uh, in my collection. So maybe I'm hoping to get some some land cards. What is he doing? What's she doing there? She's pouring blood all over his little spiky helmet. He looks like a uh... huh. This is weird. I'm getting a lot of uh, Asian influence. Maybe even Mayan in the back. But he looks like a uh... oh conquistador um let's see for the legion of dusk the immortal sun is a source of eternal life when they reclaim it they will no longer be forced to subsist on bl okay 
on the blood of a wig. Okay, so vampire cleric. This person, they're v- vampires for good. They love the sun. Love the sun. Can't get enough of that sun. Okay. Uh, then we've got a force of way. That's an instant. I think that's like a spell. Again, different marking here. So that means this is from a totally different expansion. Uh, return a target creature to its owner's hand. Okay, that's pretty standard. I know enough of Yu-Gi-Oh! to know what that does. Ferocious. If you control a creature with a power of four or greater, you may draw a card. If you do, discard the card. Okay, so that's just like an instant trigger effect. Oh, shit, look at this. An elemental. This will go good in my... Okay, when, when I just said I don't see any wear and tear, you can kind of see a little bit of weird vertical lines, maybe even a... A gash right there. Let's see. Yeah, you can even see it with the light. There we go. Right there. Also, that those weird vertical lines. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. It's almost like a printing error. Uh, okay, viewers at home, what does trample do? I'll wait for you guys. But uh, let's see. Trample, land creatures you control have trample. So I'm guessing this is pretty good. Oh, he's uncommon. That's good enough. Actually, let's see. Common, 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 uncommon for this one. Land creatures have trample. Land fall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may have a target land. You, <laughs> you may have target land you control become a 3 3 elemental with haste until the end of your turn. It is still a land. Huh. That sounds interesting. Uh, but yeah, this one's clearly gone through a little bit of wear and tear. Uh, maybe even a fake print? I don't know. There was one time me and my friend, we went over to a, uh, a dollar store, like one of those little knockoff dollar stores, and we bought a whole bunch of uh, Pokemon cards that another friend had told us about. And we opened up a pack, and they were like all the same. And, uh... Yeah, we were trying, and they were kind of fucked up with the printing. We were like, oh. We were trying to convince ourselves that they weren't fake, but we kind of already knew. Let's see, this is a common, okay, throttle. Again, another symbol. So basically, this is like from, like, maybe the last, who knows how many expansions. But anyway. Uh, target, target creature gets negative four until the end of the turn. Okay, that's pretty basic. Again, badass artwork. This looks like something out of Bloodborne. Um, then we have uh, Ridge Scale Tusker. Cool. Another uncommon. Uh, when Ridge Tails Tusker injures the battlefield, put a 1 1 counter on each of your. on each creature. Okay, so it's a buff. That's neat. Very nice. I kind of, I kind of, I'm getting into this now. Again, another new symbol. I don't know what that means. Oh, did anyone tell me what trample means? Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Once all the blocking creatures are assigned lethal damage, any remaining damage is assigned to the controller. Or plane. Oh, I know what plane walkers are. I know what a, uh, I know they're like. Are they like the control monsters or the main monsters or whatever? Whatever. Uh, creature dinosaur. Enraged whenever the Imperial Ceratops is dealt damage, you gain two life. Neat. I gain two life or it gains two life? I don't know. Whatever. Oh, this one was upside down for some reason. Uh, the pit keeper. It's a creature. It's a human wizard. Whenever the uh, pit creep, I'm trying to talk for a living. When the pit keeper enters the battlefield, you may have four or more creature cards in your graveyard. You may return. You may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, so if I have more than four then I can summon back another monster. That's pretty basic. And for like a two, uh, you know, one land to summon and one land, 
one black land and one uh, any kind of land. I at least know that. Oh, this one was standing face up in the pack. Uh, do, 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 do. Comparative analysis. Surge, I don't know what that means. You may cast a spell for its surge cost if you have, if you or your, t there's teammates? There's teammates. I didn't know there was teammates. Um, uh, has a cast another spell. Okay. Da, 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 da. Target players draw two cards. Okay. I know that the blues are all about magic and technology because the deck I have also has a bunch of weird blue dudes that are, they're like squids or like amorphous creatures in like mech mech suits i think maybe you guys know inner struggle instant uh target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power that's pretty good um four uh, four lands one fire at least uh, what's this oh that's another uncommon so these all seem to be commons and uncommons um, Druncaster. Uh, I don't... I, tap? I forget what you do with tap. Tap creature without flying. Tap target creature without flying. What the... Tap target... Okay, Surge. Thank you, Phantom. You're gonna take the role of, uh, my advisor this stream. Um, Surge cost means you may pay a cost rather than pay... For this spell's mana cost wait what you may pay cost in parentheses rather than pay the spell costs mana cost as you cast the spell if you or one of your teammates has cast another spell this turn oh huh okay well anyway that's a neat neat card no land cards i guess either land cards i don't know i don't know why we're not getting a lot of those uh the avian tactician a bird flying okay i know flying can't be blocked i know that at least much uh when avian technician enters the battlefield bolster one oh geez choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures you control and put a one one okay so it's a it's a buff very good uh, press the advantage that's another instant spell card up to two target creatures up to two character changes get two two and gain trample until the end of this turn okay so it's a buff and trample whatever oh hey, look at this a cat girl or cat monkey, pardon me. I thought it was just a girl. Um, do, 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 do. Scrounging Bandar uh, enters the battlefield with two plus two counters on it at the beginning of your upkeep. What the hell? Okay. I guess upkeep means the cost of playing cards at the beginning of your turn. Whatever. Uh, or, you know... An effect that happens at the beginning of your turn. At the beginning of your turn, you may, you may move any number of plus one one counters onto other creatures. Okay, so you start with two, and then you can move those around. That's pretty good. Oh, but it has absolutely no attack or health. Wait, <laughs> if it has no health... Okay, so it, it's not like uh, Hearthstone rules, where where the health, if it has zero health, that means it doesn't even it it does it doesn't even stay on the field. Ooh, what the hell is this? The Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot. Shit, I love this stuff. Uh, when the Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot enters the oh, so it's like a artifact. Oh, it's an artifact. That means an item, right? Okay, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Damn, look at that thing. It's like a snake eating itself. Oh, it literally is a snake eating itself. Take a look at that. Shit. 
Uh, I also got a new camera rig set up, so that's kind of fun. Uh, to, to, to enters the battlefield, you may draw a card, and you may and you lose one life. How many lives do you start out with? Uh. Oh, it has zero because. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Chen. You're right. It has zero because it enters with the one one. So that means it starts with two two. And if I move the counters off of it, that means it'll die. So I'm basically stealing life from it. Okay, that's interesting. Or you keep it on the field, and you somehow you find a way to buff it. And then you can move the buffs around. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, you start out with 30 or 20. 40, I'm hearing? Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> okay, so for two lands and then one black land, you can sacrifice the metal spinner's puzzle knot. You may draw a card and you... Okay, so... So when I enter the battlefield, I get to draw a card and lose one life. And then when I play this one, I can sacrifice it and then draw another card and lose it. Okay, so it's two free cards, basically. Okay, fine. Does this mean it stays on the field until I want to get rid of it? Oh, look at that. A loyal Pegasus. Shit, that's fun. Uh, doesn't... Okay, that's weird. The, the format's different. It doesn't give you a uh, common or uncommon. Of course, this one's from 2016, and this one's from 2014. So, yeah, this is a good four years behind. And uh, it says here that it's flying. Loyal Pegasus can't attack or block alone. Okay, so I guess I need to use it. I need to have it in tandem with another attack. Or another creature needs to attack before or after? Oh, boy. That's confusing. Kick-ass kick -ass card, though. Look at that. That's beautiful. All these remind me of, like, the metal covers. Ooh, this one's weird. Again, this we're getting back into the uh, little... A little far back because there's no common or uncommon here to tell you what it is. Uh, this is the uh, Fellhide Brawler. It is a creature and a minotaur. That's neat. I've never seen an actual minotaur with the with the horns like spun outwards. Uh, failed Hide Brawler can't block unless you control another minotaur. Okay. Okay, I'm starting to see a theme from this expansion. It can't do something unless another person is able to do something, too. Uh, neat, though. Ooh, shit. Okay, what's this thing? The Mold Graft Scavenger. Ugh. It's like a mushroom with, like, creepy black goo feet. Tendrils. Delirium! Oh boy, another effect. Um, the Mold Graft Scavenger gets plus three, plus zero, as long as there are four or more type of creatures among cards in your graveyard. Interesting. So if I have, wait, four or more types among your graveyard. Card types. That means, I guess... What consists of the types? Does the artifact, instant, or does it mean creature, human pirate, creature, human wizard, those kinds of things? Interesting. But anyway, as long as you have a graveyard full of all sorts of crap, this gets a plus three. And it's relatively cheap, too. Ooh, I was gonna do some Hearthstone maybe tomorrow. That's why I was gonna... Uh, two more commons. Strategic planning. Sorcery. Whatever that means. Uh, look at the top three of your card in your library. That's an old staple. Put one of them in your hand and the rest in your graveyard. Okay, that's... I don't need to be an expert in magic to know 
something that's always been there. Like I, and this is the desert of mindful. Oh, it's a land! Hey, a land, everybody! Look at that. Uh, land desert. Uh, desert of the mindful enters the battlefield tapped. I know tapping like adds one. Okay, so this adds one. Uh, one water land to my mana pool. Cycling. What's cycling do? Uh, discard this card. Draw a card. No, thank you. I would actually like land cards. Um, one. Th okay, so that's that's an interesting set. Out of that, one thing I also want to find. Uh, I want to point out here is that this says. Uh, it's genuine. These are genuine cards. They've been bought and re, you know resellable. We've not found any sort of rare, I assume, or valuable card. So these are all just a bunch of commas. What I find interesting is that is n in no way, shape, or form advertised on uh, on these cards. Like for example, I do have something else I found at the dollar store, and that is. Uh, the Attack on Titan trading card game by Metax. Metax, and this is produced by Panini. For those who don't know, Panini makes their, all their money by selling you sticker cards or sticker books, um, usually in tandem with Disney. So, ooh, take some leftover pasta and Italian and bake. Ooh, nice. What are we talking about? I'm sorry, I'm distracted by the chat. We are having a discussion about food. But anyway, like I said, this is interesting. Um, they, they also have this for, like, it's the same cookie-cutter game. They do this with, uh, like, they did DC Heroes with this, too. Um, but I wanted to point out that there is a little section here that says uh, each pack contains a total of five cards, three commons, two uncommon, and one rare every five packs. Replaces the common. That actually sucks, I think, because I know that you're guaranteed a rare card in every pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards that you buy, at least from when I used to do it, and I think you also get a rare card in every Pokemon? Um, pack, at least that's when I, from what I remember, you're not guaranteed a holographic, but you're guaranteed something. At least that's what I think. I know Yu-Gi-Oh! at least hey, had the golden letter, uh, uh, variants of certain cards. So, and by the way, that's only five cards. I mean, you could tell that why this was at the dollar store, because this is... Uh, okay, this is a scam. This is a hustle. Can you tell the difference? This is like trademarking off of, you know, it's it's a cookie cutter game. Uh, there's only five cards each pack, and they don't even guarantee you a rare. It's that scam, hustle, scam, hustle. Because I imagine this is a side job, um, unless. <laughs> I don't know anyone that would actually look at this and be like, oh my gosh, yay. Unless they were like maybe small children or anyone that like really, really liked magic cards. I mean, I love this because I've never been around for the last couple decades of magic cards. So I am actually excited to see what they all have. Okay, so let's start with this new one. I'll put that over there, and I, I'm sorry for the glare, but this is the only way I can kind of light this thing uh, properly. That's okay. Ooh, Painted Bluffs. Oh, Desert, and it's a land card. Kick ass. Okay, I add one triangle to your mana pool? Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Interesting. Centuries of scorching sand have carved and polished the rocky terrain of the Shifet. Shif Shifet. Beautiful looking card. So I basically... It's an extra land, and then if I tap it when I have another... 
magic. I can add any color I want. Neat. That one's cool. Oh, shit. Look at this one. Violent Impact. Destroy target artifact or land. Cycling. Two. Discard this card. Draw a card. Again, I don't know what cycling is. I think someone actually put uh, it in the in the comments. I don't know. Oh, I actually uh, I've had this. I've found this one before. Um, the Gnarlwood dry uh, di <laughs> dryad. Uh, ooh, it's a whore. I'm guessing that sounds like some sort of Cthulhu expansion. I'm just guessing. Oh, Delirium. Again, that must be a common effect. Death Touch. I don't know what that means. I assume maybe that means poison. Just by the the name. Um, and, of course, it gets 2-2 two, two, as long as there are four more types of cards in your graveyard. Okay, interesting. So, basically, this is... Like a poison card that you can summon for dirt cheap, as long as you have one green ma uh, mana, land, whatever. And then it gets a buff if you've got enough cards in your graveyard. It is uncommon, so that's interesting. Uh, we got another comment. Silent Observer. Look how badass this is. Oh, that's creepy. Flying. It's not just a feeling you are being watched. It has one and then five health. That's pretty hardy, uh, but it costs about four land plus one water. Again, I like this because I'm just seeing all sorts of cool new cards I've never seen before. Uh, stampeding Elk Herd. Uh, formidable. Whenever Stampeding Elk Herd attacks, if a creature you control has a total of eight or greater creatures... You control Trample until the end of your turn. Okay, I'm guessing that's pretty good. Again, a pretty pricey card. Five, but, you know, is this must be like a, a real high-level card to, you play later in the game. Okay, so I'm hearing confirmation that Death Touch is indeed Poison equivalent of Hearthstone. Damn. Rumble Belt Maca. Oh shit, think that thing's got like about seven eyes. Blood Rush? Shit. Okay, so Blood Rush. Discard uh, the Rumble Belt Maca. Target attacking creature gets. Wait. Target attacking creature gets plus three three until the end of turn. So the target, okay, so I can give, if I discard this card, I can give 3-3 three, three to another card I control. I'm guessing that's the rule. Interesting. Uh, erase, this is instant. Exile creature enchantment, or exile target enchantment, pardon me. Okay, so this is basically uh, silence. Again, look at that neat, awesome card art. You've got some sort of monk who is uh, uh, driving out a bunch of shadow eels. Oh, sorry, hit the hit the camera. Like I said, I got a new rig hooked up, and it's pretty neat. Look at this. Watch. I uh, let's see if I can actually put them in there. I got a bunch of old lamp stands. I've rigged it so that it all it's all nice and condensed and I don't have a bunch of uh, I don't have a bunch of stands and wires hanging out everywhere okay reclaiming vines interesting sorcery destroy target artifacts enchantment or land so again this is another kind of uh, another kind of erasing card a lot more costs more and but seems to be a lot more powerful since it's targeting artifacts, enchantments, or a land. Interesting. Okay, Thundering Giant. M fifteen, I guess this is from the fifteenth anniversary of uh, Magic the Gathering, I'm just assuming. 
Okay. Um, it's got haste, whichever this creature can attack and tap as soon as it comes under your control. Oh, that's right. That's right. If it if you play a monster or a minion or a creature, pardon me, a creature. If you play a creature, it has to wait one turn. I remember that from the game, uh, which is pretty much a staple of all these card games. Um, but since it has haste, you can attack and tap it? I forget how you tap it. Wait, does this mean defense? This means defense, right? It's like attack or def. Oh, wow. Well. Cool art, though. Watch out for those potholes, buddy. Starfall. Damn, look how badass this is. Uh, Starfall deals three damage to a target creature if that creature is in it. If that creature is an enchantment. Okay, I don't know what that means. Uh, Starfall deals three damage to that creature's controller. Okay, so it's basically three damage to the monster. And if it's if it is an enchantment, then it does three damage to the opponent. Okay, fine. Damn, look at that. Okay, so this some wizard on a mountaintop, and he's commanding a comet or a meteorite to, like, pierce a giant space chicken. Arise, Otter Chicken. Arise, arise. Uh, ooh, shit, look at this guy. Um, I'm guessing he's not a rare or anything, but he looks cool. I, I'd trade you my snack pack if you told me this guy was rare. Um, the sun guide, guide I'm not gonna, the Oreos sun guide. Um, he is a cat monk, and he has inspire, whatever that means. Uh, whenever the sun guide becomes untapped, you gain two life. Untapped. So that means like that. Okay, so that's tapped. And that's untapped. Huh. Okay. Looks cool. Oh, shit. Look at this. A blood mad vampire. I can barely make out what's going on in this. Hold on, let me get a closer look. Um, okay, so it's there's some sort of cart being overturned and uh, a very ornate decorated vampire. I don't know where her leg ends and starts. I know that's her shin. Um, is that like a dress? I guess so, whatever. Um, the Blood Mad Vampire uh, vampire Berserker, whenever the Blood Mad Vampire deals combat damage to a player, put 1-1 one, one counter on it. Okay, so it gets stronger as it goes along. Madness. Uh, one fire uh, land and then one other land. If you discard this card, discard it into exile. When you do, cast it for... Wait, cast it for its madness cost or put it into your graveyard. Okay. Cast it for its madness cost or put it in your graveyard. Huh. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. How you doing? Oh, shit. I'm sorry. We'll talk later after this. Uh, Deserts Hold, Enchantment and Aura. I don't even know what Aura means. Uh, enchant Creature. When Desert Holds enter the battlefield, if you control a desert or there is a desert card in your graveyard, you gain three health. Enchanted Creature can't attack or block. Can't attack or block, and its active ab activated abilities can't be activated. Okay, so I'm guessing that you would use this on an enemy card. I was like, why would I ever want to make it so one of my creatures can't attack? Uh, but I am, I'm assuming that this is meant to be played on an enemy creature. Uh, interesting. 
do, 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 do. Okay, damn, look at this shit. It's a vehicle. I don't even know they had vehicles. Okay, the Bomat Bazaar Barge. Okay, when the Bomat Bazaar Barge enters the battlefield, draw a card. Crew of three. Okay, so uh, tap any number of creatures you control with the total power of three or more. This vehicle becomes an artifact creature until the end of turn. Artifact creature. I'm guessing that's that's good. Um, and then three means that you need to have like three or more. So I, I put my blood mad vampire on top of my barge. And she's, she's sit sitting on it. And uh, this becomes an artifact creature until the end of the turn. I'm guessing that means... Does that mean that this can't attack unless I, like, tap a creature and then it can attack for 5-5? Five, five? I'm guessing. I'll take a look when I get back up. Do 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 do. Live fast. You draw two you draw two cards, lose two life, and get two energy counters. Okay, I don't know what energy counters are for, but they probably are really useful. Uh did 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 and then we got Ooh shit, look at this guy. Uh Park Hata Club Security. Park Hata Club Security. Okay, so this is an ethereal ethereal born warrior and he's got no special ability he's just he's just what he is he's a bodyguard for the for this club i didn't even know they had clubs back then three four okay for four mana i guess that's pretty decent Ooh, let's see this is a midnight guard i'm Guess, is that the same symbol that was on the vampire? No, it's not the same symbol. Okay, I'm just going to like... Midnight Guard, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, untap Midnight Guard. Interesting. Okay, so... Like, I guess I tap it and... Or I attack and then I tap it. But then when another creature enters the battlefield, I can untap it right away. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh shit, Fury Blade Vampire. We're getting a lot of vampires here. Okay, but that's not that's still not the matching symbol. Okay, uh Vampire Berserker. Oh, this is cool. This looks like uh Padme. Um Trample. At the beginning of the combat on your turn you may discard a card. If you do, Fury Blade Vampire gets three plus three attack. Um, until the end of your turn. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Discard a card. It boosts its attack. The Reckless Cohort. Uh, human Warrior Ally. Reckless Cohort attacks each combat, if able, unless you control another ally. What? Reckless Cohort attacks each combat, if able, unless you control... Another ally. So another ally card. Does that mean this doesn't attack if I have more than two allies? Reckless can attack controls. Whatever. Looks cool. He's got like some sort of chain. Oh no, it's not a chainsaw. It's just a blade. A blade with a, like a space in the middle, which is dumb because that means it'll just it'll crack easier. Hello, Gata Ramen Reviews. Oh shit, another vampire. Cool, I love vampires. Uh, the Bold Impaler, Vampire Knight. Uh, two plus one fire. Uh, Bold Impaler gets plus two until the end of the turn, but it don't, you know it costs dirt cheap. Neat. Uh, burning with hatred for Nahira, the Volden, Voldoren, and the Mag, Mark, Markov forces assaulted the warped Makarv Manor 
with a collective of fury they're not seen for centuries. Okay, but that's Markov. Why would they attack their own manor? See, this one's a little bent. So maybe this was used a little bit. It's also got a little, like, chip in the side. Anyway, let's keep this ball a-rollin'. Uh, cleansing Ray. This is Sorcery. Choose one. Ooh, now we're getting into choosing. Oh, hey, look, it's the same guy from, uh... Yeah, it's the same guy from this thing. Did you know that there are whole YouTube channels dedicated towards uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! lore of the characters? Like, they will actually point at, like, like, the cards apparently tell a story. It's really interesting. But anyway, destroy a target vampire, destroy a target enchantment. Okay, so you get to choose which one you want. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Oh, well, thank you, uh, Gata. Let's see. The Traveler's Amulet. Interesting. Okay, uh, sacrifice Traveler's Amulet. Search your library. I am assuming that's your deck. Uh, for a basic land card. Reveal it and then put it into your hand and then reshuffle your library. Again, I assume that's your land. So that's a basic land. That doesn't mean I won't be able to play my Painted Forest or my other, the, the Painted Bluff and the uh, Desert of the Mindful or Mindless or whatever. Catalog. Ooh, damn, this is beautiful. Look at this shit. Okay, uh, instant, draw two cards, and then discard one. Okay, pretty basic. That's a pretty basic staple of card games. Oh, wow, that's... That art style totally shifted. Uh, foot soldiers. Creature, human. Uh, infantry dis deployment is the art of putting your troops in the wrong place at the right time. I guess that's kind of a joke. Two out of two attack for health. Yeah. Oh, this must be some sort of reprint. Because look, that's that's uh, that's a different kind of uh, that's a different kind of copyright since the ones that have been going forward. See, because that's 1993 through 2000. Uh, 2005. This must be really older. In fact, it's got a nine next to it. I don't know what that means. Um, but yeah, this must be like a reprint of one of the earlier ones. Cat Catar's Companion. Look at this badass. Okay, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, okay, Cathar's Companion gains indestructible until the end of the turn. Damage and effects that say destroy, don't destroy. Okay, so it basically gains Divine Shield. Or, no, it, it gains immunity until the end of the turn. Oh, that's the ninth core set. Ninth edition. Okay, so... Ninth edition. Does that mean it's like a reprint of all the older ones? Or... Giant Spider. Okay, pretty much what it says it is. Reach... This creature can block creatures with flying. Okay, so basically, flying was a way to get around all the blocking creatures, and this one can block the flying creatures. Which makes sense, because it's a damn spider. Uh, and that is a common one. Ooh, shit, look at this one. Another bugaboo. Uh, searing light, instant. Destroy target attacking or blocking creature with power of two or less so bye bye giant spider if I have one land card or uh, desert I guess that's what that means desert what is this well this has to be common because we haven't gotten any what well, it's dual plant 
Does that mean or? That must mean or. That, that's not the two combined. That just means it has to either be a water or a plant. Ooh. Okay, so sturdy hatchling. Um, actually, let's, it doesn't say whether it's rare or not. Let me look that up real quick. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of shit going on here. Sturdy hatchling comes into play with four negative. Okay, so this isn't rare. This looks like shit. Uh, it comes in with four negative counters on it. So that means it only has two attack. Uh, sturdy hatchling gains shroud until the end of the turn. I'm guessing shroud means that it. Uh, I'm guessing shroud means that it can't be targeted. Um, to to end the end turn, whenever you play a green spell, remove one of the counters. Whenever you pl play a blue spell, remove one of the counters. Okay. So basically, this is like it. It implies it is a sturdy hatchling. Uh, the more cards you play, the stronger it gets. And it has Shroud until the end of your next turn, which means that you have one more turn to kind of make it a badass. Ooh, shit, look at this thing. What is this? Enchantment. Aura. Uh, do, 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 do. Cat. Cartouche of... Ambi ambition, okay. Uh, enchant creature enchant creature you control. Enters the battlefield, you may put a negative 1-1 one, one counter on that creature. Enchant creature gets plus 2-2 two, two and has lifelink. Okay, what the hell is lifelink? Lifelink. Somebody tell me what lifelink is. Okay, it's uncommon if it has a... Oh. Okay. Do, 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 do. So wait, what do white cards? What? So what do the white borders mean? Oh, whatever. Um. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, cartoons. Do 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 do. Again, I'm kind of. Life link equals life steal. Okay, that's that's good to know. Cool, cool. Uh, ghostly flicker. Exile two target artifacts, creatures, and or lands you control. That's not good. And then return those cards to the battlefield under your control. Then return those cards to the battlefield under your control. Ghostly flicker, t exile, exile to target artifacts region. So I'm guessing this is a way of like purging effects that you don't want to. Uh, I I guessing if I have like a monster and it's it's got super it's super jinxed, it's like cursed or whatever, whatever happens in this game, and then I can put play ghost ghostly flicker, and I can basically get rid of it. And then bring it back without any bad effects. I guess that's what it means. Ooh, look at you. Scholar of Anthros. Ar Arthero Arthurios. Whatever. Um, each opponent loses one life. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. Okay, so... Basically, I'm stealing one life force away from my opponent in, like, a really weird kind of way. Wait, can you have more than one, two players in a game? I was just thinking about that. Oh, exile someone else's stuff. Well, no, it, no, look, look, it specifically says exile two target artifacts, creatures, or lands you control. So that means I, you control. Exile two target artifacts, creatures that I control already. That means that I already have it. Okay, so yeah, you can have, like... Like, if there are four players, and I play this card, and we each lose one health, 
but then I get four health back. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, Scholar, you're like, you're a go-to card. Uh, horrific Revelation. Okay. Uh, target player, target player discards a card, then puts the top card of his or her library into her graveyard. Target player discards a card. Okay, so basically just get rid of two cards. One from your hand, and then one, the top card from your deck to the graveyard. Interesting. Solemn Offer. I think I've seen this one before. I think I have this in another set somewhere. Um, uh, destroy target artifact or enchantment, and then you gain four life. P cool. Cool. Pretty self-explanatory. Well, what's that? That's weird. D does it look like these two are color different, the borders? Yeah, this one's definitely darker than this one. Okay, let's we'll see what happens when I flip those two over. Uh, Call of the Conclave. Okay, that's a that's a horse girl. Sorcery. Create a three-three green centaur creature token. So this is sorcery that produces a like if I needed a token. Let's see if I have a token. I don't have a token, I have a quarter. So, boom. That's... After I play this card and it goes to the graveyard, or wherever, uh, I have a coin that's a 3-3 centaur. And I'd say, oh, look, there's my 3-3 centaur. His name is George. Okay, I'm going to flip both these over at the same time. Yeah, this is weird. I'm even seeing some weird... Uh, printing on this on this lettering in fact well this is a, th this is definitely an older one from 1994 is when the original uh, copyrights from so that uh, I don't know this one even this one looks like it's either a misprint or it's fake Interesting. Well, what, is, what does it even do? It's an enchanted creature. It's a Feral's Mantle, or Farrell's Mantle. Uh, enchant creature, if a target creature attacks and is, and is not blocked, it may deal X plus 2 damage to any other creature where X is the power of the creature. Creature enchants. And what? Okay. Okay, so basically it does t plus two damage when I play this on another creature. Are you guys saying it's just really old? Okay, it's probably, yeah. Because the, even the wording is different from what I've seen. Because it says, I don't know, it just looks old. But that's cool. That's the oldest card we've gotten so far. Uh, and this is the Dead Eye Harpooner. Oh, she's like an Inuit woman. Uh, dwarf warrior. Okay. I avoided the word uh, Eskimo and used the proper word Inuit. But the card made me still use the word dwarf. So I, there's no way I can... There's no way you can win when you talk about, like, old European, European like, mystic folklore. You're gonna sound like a damn racist either way. Um, revolt. When dead-eyed harpooner enters the battlefield, if a... Well, if a... Okay. If you control left the battlefield this turn, destroy the target, tapped creature, an opponent controls. Permanent. If a permanent, you control... Okay, so I'm guessing that means if I if some sort of card effect happened, then you can destroy a monster afterwards. Again, I like the I like the card uh, art. She seems to have destroyed some sort of monster. Ooh, look at this one. 
Uh, this is a collar of gales. This is a merfolk. Okay, so she's it's mermaid. Uh, target creature gains flying until the end of your turn. So I can give flying to another creature? Interesting. Some merfolk choose to rest their gills, their fins in water. I believe wisdom exists not only where we were born, but where we were told not to go. Okay. That sounds like the little mermaid. But anyway, this is you, you play this and you can give another uh, monster uh, fly, I guess. Let's see. Instant. Alters Reap. Ooh, look at the That's badass. Uh, let's see. As an additional cost to car cast Alters Reap, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. So I have to sacrifice a creature and play a one a one land and one dark that kind of sucks especially since there are other cards I found that work better okay look at this bad boy this is the desert of the tr desert of the true this is land and this is a desert card desert of the true enters the battlefield tap at, at a sun to your mana pool Cycling, you can discard the card. Cycling, what does cycling do? I forget. Anyway, and then we've got the Gilded Ceradon. Damn, look at that hair. That's like Guile's haircut. Okay, uh, badass. Whenever Gilded Ceradon attacks, if you control a desert or there is a desert card in your graveyard... Targeted creature can't. Um, creature target creature cannot block this turn. Not bad. Okay. We've got forty more cards to go through. Let's see if we have any more surprises, like that really old card. I could totally tell too because the printing looked so much weirder and older. Uh, let's see. This is the, the, the Gust Walker. It's a human wizard. Uh, you may exert Gust Walker as it attacks. When you do... Wait, wait, you may exert? I don't know what that means. When you do, it gets plus 2-2, two, two, plus 1-1, one, one, and gains flying until the end of the turn. So basically, it does, it does what the mummy does in that movie. and becomes like this weird... Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so cycling... Getting rid of cards to get a new one before you play. Okay, so if I wanted to cycle this. Okay, so basically I'm. it's like, oh, I want a better land. And then I just discard this and then I get a new one. Weird. Wait, is there a limit to how many lands you can have? Don't forget to log into Hearthstone... So I get a free golden pack. Oh, that's right. Oh, that is the 13th shit. Oh, today we also got free tacos because the uh, Diamondbacks scored five home runs. I think that's what it means. But anyway, we got free tacos at Taco Bell. Grandma saw that on a commercial and that's where we went today. I had like the Baja Blast for like the first time in forever. It was okay. What do you mean this? Oh, it's right there. An exerb creature can't. Okay, you were right. I'm an idiot. Okay, well that's a avian in. Oh, okay. So that's another bird warrior in bomb. Okay, well. Exile this creature to your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it. Except while it, except it's a white zombie bird warrior with no mana cost. Embalm only as a sorcery. Okay, so. Whew, um. Okay, so I'm guess. Okay, 
basically this turns uh, this card into a another version of this card with no mana cost. And Embalm only is sorcery. Okay, f fine. That's what Embalm does. Great. Okay, we got Creature, Chorus of the Tides. Siren. It's got Flying, and it's got Heroic. Uh, to do, do whenever you cast a spell that targets the Chorus of Tides. Sakrai 1. To Sakrai, look at the top card in your library then you may put that card on the bottom of your library. Sakrai, Sakrai, Sakrai. Okay, so, okay, fine. That basically means if I don't like the card that I, uh, that's, I'm gonna get next, I, I move that to the bottom. Fair enough. Ooh, Boros, another hound. Uh, let's see, uh, Battalion, whenever Boros uh, and at least two other creatures attack, Boros uh, gains lifelink until the end of the turn. Damage dealt by a creature with lifelink also casts its controller, uh, uh, also casts its controller that much life. Okay, so basically this explains what lifelink is. So this is, must be an earlier card. In fact it is, it's from 2013. And that other one that explained lifelink or had lifelink in it was from like 2015 or 2016 or something. Cobbled Wings. This is an artifact. And this is from 2011. But it looks like it started in 1993. So, well, that, that must be like the old way of copywriting stuff where they, they, they give the year that it was created and then the year that it went up to. So this is Cobbled Wings. It's an artifact. Equipped creature has flying. Okay, equipped one. Attached to a target you control. Equipped only as sorcery. Okay, so basically, basically this gets flying. Ooh, Siren Lookout. Creature, Siren Pirate. Nice. Oh, fortune telling. Okay, so that's what that old one meant. Okay, so this is flying. When Cyber Lookout enters the battlefield, it explores. What? Okay, reveal the top card in your library. Put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. Then put the card back or put it into your graveyard. Or put it into my graveyard. Okay, so lots lots of stuff going on with this one. So I play the card. I look at the top card. If it's a land, I put it in my hand. Uh, but if it's not a land, then this, this gets more attack and health. And then I have a choice of taking that card and either putting it back where I found it for next turn or putting it under. That's... A lot to process right there. Uh, do, 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 do. Ooh, look at you. Uh, a guide. A hound scout. Uh, enters the battlefield. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So basically double its attack and health. Or s choose one. Okay, yeah, choose one. Or search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it. Then shuffle your life. Okay, so basically, you choose between either a stronger, stronger monster or getting another land. I like this card. I think if I were making one, uh, if I were making a deck, I would probably put like this one in here because that sounds like an interesting mechanic just to have. Ooh, this is an old one. Or a new one, I guess, because the artwork is kind of different. We got a striped river winder hexproof oh geez what the hell is hexproof okay this creature can't be targeted by spells or abilities your opponent to control okay cycling water discard this card draw a card 
Okay, why would I want to do that? This looks like a pretty cool card. It's it's hex proof, which means it can't it's, it's can't be targeted, and it's got five five. Okay, and we are back. Hopefully that kind of resets stuff. Uh, yeah. Just... Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so Goblin Fire Slinger. That's a pretty cool card. We said. Uh, the High Tide Hermit Crab. Look at you, Defender. I don't know what Defender does. Uh, when High Tide Hermit enters the battlefield, you get four energy counters. Pay two energy counters. High Tide Hermit can attack this turn as though it didn't have Defender. Okay, so I'm guessing Defender means that it can only block, right? That's just a... Uh, that's just a... It's not a shot in the dark. It's more like a shot... in, like, mid-twilight. Since I'm guessing Defender means... Well, since the wording, since, you know, as though it didn't have Defender. I'm assuming that means... Defender means can't attack. Perfect. Okay, that's what I thought it meant. Okay, Appetite for the Unnatural. Look at this little monkey. He's eating a, like a... He's eating like a, a metal bird. Destroy two artifact or enchantment, and then you gain life. Pretty simple, pretty basic, pretty forward. Hmm. We're having issues again. I don't know what for. No one should be goofing with the internet. Okay, and we are back. Hopefully. Car... Car... Karmagar... Karmagar... Butcher. Um, it's a Minotaur that's got Inspire. Whenever Karmagar Butcher becomes untapped, it gets two plus attack until the end of that turn. Interesting. That's what Inspire means, I guess. Ugh, what the hell is this? Silent Skimmer. It's like a big bug eel thing. It's a drone. Devoid. This card has no color but it's black hmm hold on we're having a little bit of trouble here Let's see. Okay. Uh, flying. Whenever Silent Skimmer attacks, defending player loses two life. Okay, so... Huh. But what's the point? It's got zero attack. Huh. Okay, well then you have the Aphea Pro Protector. Aphea Protector. Vig vigilance. I don't know what that means. Someone tell me what vigilance means. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, Eld Eldrazar are basically Cthulhu monsters. Okay, so they're Eldritch monsters. F f fair enough. And they came out around 2005. And this one's from 2016, and it has vigilance. I don't know what vigilance is. Huh. But it's 1 4, so it's got a lot of health. Cool. Sacred Armory. Uh, target creature gets plus 1 uh, attack until the end of the turn. Fair enough. Okay, vigilance is a can attack for you and then block for your next turn doesn't tap when it attacks okay so it basically it's gets a double effect or something 
Okay, My, mind static. Uh, counter target spell unless its controller pays six. Okay, so someone has a spell, I play this, and unless they play six mana pool or whatever, then that doesn't do, then, you know, then the effect is negated. Cool. Oh, what the hell? You guys were right. That is some, some Cthulhu shit. Look at that. Eldraza, Eldraza Beast. Mockery of Nature. Mockery of Nature. That's even a badass name. Mockery of Nature. Emerge 7. You may cast the spell by sacrificing a creature and paying the emerge cost reduced by that creature's converted mana cost. You may cast Mockery of Nature. When you cast Mockery of Nature, you may destroy target artifacts or enchantments. Okay, so basically, emerge. Does that mean instead of paying nine, I pay seven and then one tree? Hmm. Oh, well, it looks cool. Look at that. It's just like a giant dog with tendrils and just like a big weird mouth. Uh, then we got the Shatter Skull Recruit. He's a giant ally warrior. Uh, menace. This creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Shit. Okay, so it, it menace mean menace means that it has to have two blockers on it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and then we've got this thing. Borrowed Mable malevolence. Escalate. Okay, what the hell is escalate? Two, pay this cost for each mode chosen beyond the first. Escalate, escalate, escalate. Uh, escalate. Okay, you can sacrifice a creature and then subtract that cost for the emergent cost and then play... Okay. Okay, so basically just sacrifice another monster and then make that one lower. Fair enough. And I'm guessing this one means that I get to choose one effect and then if I pay two mana, I get to do another effect after that one. Which is target gets one... Okay, so basically I get to do twi two of these twice if I want to. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay, last set. I'm wondering if I can make a good deck out of all these. Or if it would just be a n noisy hodgepodge. Okay, we got the Colossal Dreadmaw. It's a dinosaur. It's got trample, and I know what that means. That means if a blocked monster has uh, damage on it, then it doesn't block. Okay, and it's like a big old dinosaur. Ooh, plummet. Destroy target creature with flying. So, flying creatures get killed. Fair enough. Uh, Tamar Banner. Ooh, it's an artifact. Add a tree, water, or fire to your mana pool. Uh, and then if I sacrifice it, I get to draw a card. Okay. Fair enough. Fouled Tongue Shriek. Ooh. Target opponent loses one life for each attacking creature I control. And I gain that much. Okay, so interesting. That's kind of like, um... I don't know. There are a bunch of equivalents in Hearthstone. Ooh, look at this shit. Uh, Bell Troll Dragon. Nice. Flying and hexproof. Megamorph, whatever that means. Uh, you may cast this card face down as a 2 2 creature for 3. Turn it face up anytime for its megamorph cost and put 1 1 counter. 
Okay, so basically I have five and then one, uh, one water. But if I want to, I can say, hey, look at this. Uh, I'll pay... Th Do I have to show my opponent this? I assume I would, because then I could just play all my cards and say, oh, this is like a 3-3 Mega Morph, or whatever. Um, so play, play it face down as a 2-2 creature for one turn for just three mana. That basically means that, okay, so I have a 2-2 two, two monster right there, three mana. If it survives and I get enough mana in my pool, then I can Mega Morph it. Bell Toll, not Bell Troll, pardon me. Uh, I do not show this to my opponent. Okay, so face down cards, Mega Morph face down cards are always going to be 2-2 two, two at a cost of 3. Is that what I'm I'm looking at? Make Morph wasn't very powerful. Okay, so this is kind of like from what I'm looking from the uh the chat, Morphs weren't very uh weren't very popular or they weren't very powerful. It sounds like a goofy kind of mechanic. Uh, go nuts, machinations. Go go nuts, go gontees. Pardon me, gontees machinations. Machinations. Okay, whenever you lose life for the first time each turn, I get energy. Okay, fair enough. You get an energy counter. Damage costs. Damage causes loss of life. Pay two energy to sacrifice uh, this card. Each opponent loses three life. I gain life equal to the life that was lost this way. Okay, so I'm basically I'm I'm. Oh. Huh. I don't I don't know. I'm basically just I'm I'm losing life by. Yeah. Every time I take damage, I get an energy counter. When I ta get enough energy counters, I can discard this card and deal three damage to each opponent, and then I get that much life back. Okay. Ooh, Haunting Hem. Shit, that looks painful. Uh, uh, target player discards two cards. If you cast this spell during your main phase, that player discards four cards instead. So what's a main phase? And that looks different. That looks like a different kind of uh, emblem than we've seen before. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I don't know what a main phase is, but it sounds painful. Ooh, another uh, one of those creatures, the Eld... Eldrazen, Drone, Ma of Kozilek, Kozilek, the Ma of Kozilek, Dev Devoid, this creature has no color, even though it, I need, I need fire to summon it, uh, to, 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 Ma of, Ko okay, so for any kind of land, it gets 2-2 two, two until the end of its turn. Uh, make horse that ruins, and then they make world where not even ruins stand. Ooh, that's kind of poetic. Bio shift. Move any number of plus one one counters from target creature onto another target creature with the same controller. Okay. So basically just shift the 1-1 one, one mana cr crystals or whatever. Mana crystals. And then you got Purge. Destroy target artifact creature or black creature. Oh, well, that's... Uh, it cannot be regenerated. Okay, so I'm guessing regenerated means put back? Uh, 
Uh, Avon Squire, that's another bird soldier. Uh, exalt, whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets 1-1 one, one until the end of the turn. Okay, so fair enough. And that's an M13, not an M15, so I don't know what that means. Uh, Bountiful Harvest. Okay, so these are going to be M13s from looks for a while. Uh, sorcery. Gain one life for each land you control. Fair enough. Ooh, look at you, girl. Uh, Black Throne Vampire. Creature. Vampire. Sacrifice a creature. Black Throne Vampire gets 2-2 two, two until the end of the turn. Okay. Uh, to, 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 then we got the Mortis Strider. Oh, this is a badass card. Look at that guy. And it's gold. What does that mean? Why is it gold? Uh, one water and then one death card. When Mortis, Stridus, when Mortis Strider dies, return it to its owner's hand. Okay. So basically it's it's an never and never dying creature. Huh. Why is it gold? Does that mean it's rare? I bet it's I bet not. And then we've got the uh Nightbird clutches, sorcery up to up to two target creatures cannot block this turn flashback oh god what's flashback you may cast this card from your graveyard with its flashback cost then it is exiled okay so I assume I assume the graveyard is one thing like it's over here like this is this is play this is graveyard and then exile means boop, it's it's nowhere it's not even in the game and no more am I right Oh, gold means the gold means multicolor. Okay, very good. Very good. Ooh, look at you, Copper Horn Scout. It's a elf scout. Whenever Copper Horn Scout attacks, untap each creature you control. Wow, untap each creature I control. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Ooh, look at you. Uh, st the Therabin Standard Bearer. Uh, do, 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 discard a card. Put a 1-1 one, one white human soldier uh, creature token onto the battlefield. Uh, so, wait. For one... For one land and then one... One... Uh, sun... And then, and then tap, discard a card. So basically I have to discard a card from my hand, I assume, and then I get to add a soldier to my hand, uh, my, my, the field. Eh, okay, I guess. Wait, you mean the copper horn might actually be, no, it's common. Uh, let's see, what is this? The Centaur Battlemaster. Ooh, nice. Heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets the Centaur Battlemaster, put three plus one, one tokens on it. Okay. So basically, I, I target it with a spell, and then it doubles its attack and health. Cool. Uh, the Jackal Archer. Bitter Bow Sharpshooters. Vigilance and reach. Okay, so vigilance means that it. Okay, let me see, let me let me study. Let me let me redo. Um, uh, vigilance means that it can block and attack in a turn, or it could do one before the other. But reach means that it can it can stop flying creatures, which you'd expect from a 
you know, like a Bowman. And then we have the last but not least, the Marauding Bone Lasher. Slasher, pardon me. The Marauding Bone Slasher, and it is a zombie minotaur. Cool. Uh, mar mar marauding Bone Slasher cannot block unless you control another zombie. Fair enough. Okay, well, that's pretty much about it. Um, yeah, so now, out of all that, I guess I got myself a hundred... Magic the Gathering cards. Again, like I suspected, nothing rare. But then again, they don't have to guarantee you any sort of rare card. This is all just supplemental. Or it's fun for me because I've never played Magic. And I've never... It, this is catching up on like what? Oh, this has got to be like 20 years. 20 years that card game's been around, right? Do, 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 do. Okay, now everyone's looking up the cost of each of the cards. Well, we don't need to do that. Um, yeah, but anyway, I'm going to enjoy these just because of the awesome artwork. Hey, look at there. There's the puzzle knot. Um, well, thank you all for joining me. I've learned a little bit uh, more about Magic the Gathering. Maybe I'll, sh I'll dig up that old deck I have. I think I have that back home in storage. Uh, and I'll dig it up, and then we'll take a look at the found deck that I have. That I found for the, uh, that I found at a, a, not a, it was a different kind of thrift store. Kind of a run-down little place. Oh, Magic Arena is coming soon. Maybe I'll give that a shot. Well, anyway, everybody, thank you for joining me today. That was fun. I enjoyed testing out this new rig setup. And, uh, yeah. Maybe we'll do more of these the more cards I get. Who knows? But anyway, thank you all. You have a good evening. And we will talk to you all later.